Welcome, welcome everyone. My name is Sean, and I would like to start today's proceedings with a bit of a question for you guys out there in the audience. Have you ever seen a news story or a headline or something like that and thought to yourself, wow, I can't believe that person would have acted in that way? Over the time, over the history of this person's life, they've been in such a position of trust and proven worthy of that trust that I'm absolutely shocked by these alleged actions. And honestly, it's so out of character, I don't even believe it. I reject it on its face. Well, that's how exactly zero people should have felt about Regina Hill, who is accused of robbing a 96-year-old woman by getting power of attorney over her of over 100 grand, stealing a place, renovating it for herself, and all these additional crimes, because based on this woman's history, she should have never been elected to political office, they should have seen the warning signs and rejected her on its face, and when you don't do that, when you put somebody like this in power, guess what? They repeat the same pattern of behavior that they had been arrested for over 20 times. Now, we're going to get into this. We're going to talk about this insane story. But before we do, I want to thank everybody who signed up over at actualjusticewarrior.com slash join. Give me the money. Give you give me the money. Okay. And remind you that on Saturday, April 27th, I'm going to be in Austin, Texas. It's for the Minds Fest. Link to tickets in the top of the description. First, though, a 96 year old woman cheated out of thousands of dollars in News 6 is uncovered. Investigators believe Orlando City Commissioner Regina Hill may be involved in this. Now, it's very important for you guys out there in the audience to know and understand and feel in your hearts that everything that we're going to talk about as it relates to this 96-year-old woman is alleged. In fact, I think it's even fair to say that since she's not been charged criminally with anything involving this particular case, that it's kind of not even fully alleged yet that she did these things to this elderly woman. But the thing is, I did some research on Regina Hill. I started looking into who this woman was, and one of the things that I found absolutely hilarious was this local news segment from when she won her runoff election from nine years ago and how they led that segment off. A fresh face and name is elected to the Orlando City Commission. Regina Hill captured a little more than 54% against Juan Lynham. Hill's been arrested at least 21 times, but she's turned her life around and vows to do the same for District 5. I'm sorry, what, what was that last part? Hill's been arrested at least 21 times, but she's turned her life around and vows to do the same for District 5. She she has 21 prior arrests, 20 21 prior arrests, but but she's reformed, she's changed her ways, she's she's a good person. Let me look into those non-alleged crimes, the ones that she's been arrested for, and those cases have been adjudicated, because it turns out among these 21 arrests are drug charges, other charges, DUI, all kinds of issues that this woman had leading into election day, yet somehow, nine years ago, the great voters of Orlando's District 5, at least 2,000 of them, because it's a local election with incredibly low turnout decided that they were going to send this woman to office they looked at her they looked at her criminal history and they said that's our girl go get them here's 2,000 votes I'm just excited I never thought somebody like me I when I started the campaign you know it's been some valleys high some valleys low but God that I stand in front of these steps to represent the people Regina Hill says she's just a little girl from Paramore, but now she's moving on up to lead District 5 in Orlando after defeating Juan Lynham last night in a runoff election. And they voted her in each and every subsequent year. And with this criminal history, this should not be surprising to anyone that she is accused of more crimes. And by the way, she's had scandals throughout the course of the years that shows that maybe she still has drug problems, maybe she still has a bunch of issues, not to mention her family scandals, which are also so ridiculous and absurd for an elected official to hold. But again, these local government positions where basically nobody votes tend to lead to some of the most corrupt individuals who not only commit regular ordinary politician corruption, but also commit crimes like gain power of attorney over a 96-year-old woman, steal her home, pay for a facelift, pay for expensive hotels, and what can only be described as the Tiffany A. Henyard situation in Orlando, Florida. I mean, seriously, if we run down the list, list of these charges they include drug offenses so we have prior addiction issues fraud this is very interesting considering what we're talking about now using bad checks and duis now to be fair to regina hill she says listen i cleaned up my act i straightened up and i'm flying right i'm no longer into the drugs or anything like that 
And honestly, throughout her history as this person in this position, despite what I said earlier about the signs being incredibly obvious, she showed no signs of relapse or anything like that, except for this video diary from five years ago where she clearly and obviously relapsed, and this was clear and obvious as a sign of a mega problem with this representative, who again has control over tax dollars and a history of fraud, and obviously should have been greeted with much more suspicion. <laughs> Out to the people, uh, we're back. Tonight, this clip showing Orlando City Commissioner Regina Hill video journaling has been seen more than 10,000 times on social media. I'm not all that cohesive because um, we will go back on the now look, she may just be drunk in this situation, to be perfectly fair to her. She may just be on the sauce at this moment in time. And to be fair, she did go on TV after this and cry about it and say that she was so, so sad that people were watching this because honestly, it was just a low moment. And it's not like this woman is in a position of power. So why are you criticizing this woman in a position of power for clearly and obviously showing that she should not be in a position of power? You can hear her words are mumbled. Her eyes keep rolling, leaving some to ask on Facebook, what was happening? It's a lonely journey. Just being in politics is a lonely journey. Hill decided to sit down with only one reporter today to answer his questions and ask that he share the interview with us. She said this video was stolen from her. She doesn't know by whom or how. Uh, I want to make clear I am not on any controlled substances are uh, on drugs or substance abuse. So what was causing her to act like this? She says it's a combination of life events, her daughter's murder in 2015, her son's arrest on drug charges, long days at work. Now look, I wanted to leave this part in here because you need to understand that there is tragedy involved in this situation. Now her son, we'll get into his criminal charges in a little bit, has his own issues. I don't think this is in the same scale as what happened to her daughter, but yes, her daughter was in fact murdered and you could understand how people who have issues with controlled substances can end up relapsing in these dramatic situations. Now, it doesn't help that her son appears to be a drug dealer and he was arrested for drugs and weapons despite already being a convicted felon and he fled the police. The son of Orlando City Commissioner Regina Hill is set to appear before judge this morning. It's all after his arrest on a long list of drug and gun charges. 28-year-old Raheem Hill is accused of possession of cocaine and marijuana along with having guns and ammunition even though he's a convicted felon. The Sentinel reports Hill was wanted because troopers say he was a passenger in a car that took off from a traffic stop last month then crashed into other cars. So yeah, as a sympathetic person, I can understand the emotions are high and relapse often is triggered by these heightened senses of emotions. So I can be understanding and compassionate to the issues that she had in this particular situation while also understanding, and I hope everybody should understand, and if you had an addicted relative in your family, I'm sure you do understand that she shouldn't be in charge of her own money, the taxpayer's money, or the money of a 96-year-old woman who cannot fend or defend herself from this person who's looking to take advantage, who has this history of fraud and substance abuse issues. Now, that being said, while we can have our sympathies for individuals who go through tragedies, for people who struggle with drug addiction, while simultaneously understanding that a history of fraud, a history of drug addiction is not somebody we should have in public office, we should also recognize that she had other scandals, like the fact that five years ago, again, same time frame, she was alleged to be living in low-income public housing despite the fact that her position paid her over $60,000 a year. Well, Matt, we found out that this complaint was actually filed by a family member of one of Regina Hill's biggest political rivals this election season, just a couple days before election. Luana Gelser tells me this isn't about politics, though. She says she is concerned that Orlando residents are not only paying Hill's salary, they may also be helping her pay her rent. Now, look, the reason I'm bringing this stuff up to you guys out there in the audience is because I want to paint a picture of this person, of this office holder, and how there were obvious signs that this is somebody not to be trusted with the public purse. This is someone who actually has not reformed her ways, actually is slipping back and forth between sobriety and addiction, and has a history of crimes, fraud, financial crimes, has criminals in the family that you also need to be concerned about, and is willing to take advantage and gain the system specifically to have ideal 
living arrangements that she is not really paying for because one of the allegations that she is accused of involving this 96 year old woman is living on a property that she renovated for herself that belonged to that woman rent free that she used her money in order to pay for. We found out the Florida Department of Law Enforcement was actually tipped off about this last year by a former aide of Regina Hills who was fired from her job. They've spent the last year looking into this and they tell us their investigation isn't over yet. New Six got a hold of these investigative documents that claim, among other things, Orlando City Commissioner Regina Hill fraudulently established power of attorney over a 96-year-old woman. Investigators say that power of attorney allowed her to secure a mortgage in the woman's name and co-purchase this home in the Lake Man Estates area of Orlando without the woman even knowing about it. So again, think about what they're doing with this investigation. Think about the charges that we talked about earlier. One was check cashing, which is forging documents. The other was financial fraud. And right off the bat, one of the things that they discovered, by the way, by a disgruntled employee who only tipped them off post being fired, it would be nice if any of these people would, you know, tip off the police, tip off law enforcement out of some form of integrity instead of petty revenge but whatever I'll take what I can get at this moment in time and she apparently used that as a mechanism in order to purchase this house in the name of this old lady so it wasn't a property that she already owned and live in that property rent free and this was all without this woman knowing and by the way the basis for this the genesis of this was that she got power of attorney over this woman so right now you have the family trying to keep this woman the hell away from her even though with power of attorney she could basically make any financial decision she wants from her but it's interesting because the old woman and the family didn't know about this and she appeared to only be moving monies around that they possibly wouldn't notice as a mechanism to not get caught but again the investigation is still pending they say Hill then allowed her son and his girlfriend to live in it they also claim Hill moved into this house about a mile away in the Washington Shores neighborhood that was once owned by the elderly woman's parents. They claim Hill used the woman's money to renovate the inside and didn't pay rent. Okay, so my apologies for the confusion. Honestly, I wasn't expecting this many properties to be here. So the home that she purchased new for 100K with this woman's money, she ended up giving to her son and her boyfriend. The home that she moved into was actually the parents of the 96-year-old woman, so it was in the family for a long time, and she ended up having that renovated, like I said earlier, for her to live in. I apologize for the confusion, trying to get the facts right as they come out, but yeah, there's, there's some homes and properties in involved, not to mention a bunch of other ancillary expenses. FDLE investigators also claim that Hill used more than $100,000 of the woman's cash and credit cards to purchase things for herself, like expensive perfume, clothing, IV vitamins, a facelift, a New Year's Eve trip to Miami, car insurance, and dental surgery. Yeah, this is absolute insanity. So she ends up taking about a hundred grand from this elderly woman, like we talked about earlier, in order to purchase a home in part in this old woman's name. So her son and girlfriend, the one that was arrested for drug dealing, by the way, have somewhere to live. At the same time, she moves into another property owned by this woman, renovates it for herself, lives in it rent free. So we're already north of a hundred thousand dollars in just the property expenses. But then she ends up spending, according to this complaint, an additional $100,000 plus on perfume, a trip to Miami, a facelift, and dental surgery. And by the way, the New York Post did an absolutely exquisite job of giving us a cover photo of this particular woman because you could see the old footage of her, how she looked, how her teeth looked, and the New York Post kind of nailed it right here by giving us the photo with the proof all over this woman's face. By showing us what we need to know about this case at a glance, assuming that she did use this elderly woman's money for these expenses. And to me, this is just horrible. But again, not surprising. You elect somebody with 21 prior arrest, somebody who is a criminal, somebody who has shown signs of relapsing while they're in office, somebody who committed financial fraud and forgery, and can we be surprised that years later she is alleged to commit financial fraud and forgery? Now, the woman is fighting back. Her attorneys filed court papers seeking to keep Hill away from the woman's finances and her property, and an Orange County judge approved a temporary injunction 
last week. Yes, so thank you to that judge for looking at this situation and agreeing with this injunction in order to assess this particular situation because this just as easily could have gone in the other direction giving Regina Hill the opportunity to drain this woman's bank account blow the money on stuff and then she could deal with the criminal consequences later but that money would be gone. We called Commissioner Hill and she picked up. I'm calling to see if you want to talk to us or do an interview with us today about the allegations against you. She didn't want to comment and referred us to her attorney. We asked the city of Orlando and the mayor's office for a comment. Spokeswoman Ashley Papagni said the city has been made aware of the injunction involving Hill. They are not part of that injunction and they don't have any details on the allegations. So Regina Hill ends up picking up the phone when the local news calls. Honestly, one of the more shocking parts about this whole story, because you got to think about all the different media outlets that must be calling her. She refers them to her attorney, which is a good move for her. And then they contact the mayor's office. And honestly, genuinely, I, I don't believe this person's name is actually real. And I know this distracts from the point, but, but I don't care. I, th this is the name of the spokesperson for the Orlando mayor's office. Spokeswoman Ashley Papagni said the spokeswoman Ashley Papagni and Ashley Papagni spokeswoman Ashley Papagni that is obviously a fake name that person doesn't exist they're making fun of you at the local news I don't respect your journalism anymore because there is no way in hell the spokesperson for your mayor's office has a first name that rhymes with her last name I, I don't believe it I'm against it honestly I think this whole thing has just been blown wide open because who the hell is Ashley Papagni except for Regina Hill fraudulently also posing as this other person that's why she needed the facelift and the dental work in order to double dip and collect two paychecks maybe I just took this conspiracy a little bit too far but the thing is I've never seen Ashley Papagni and Regina Hill in the same room at the same time so as of right now I'm gonna assume that that's just the reality of the situation until I'm proven wrong and even after I'm proven wrong now very important Regina Hill has not been arrested or charged with anything yet and again FDLE says that they are still investigating this. Now look just like I said in the open the local news makes it clear right here she has not been charged with anything criminally the investigation is still ongoing we may find out even more insane allegations on top of that since we have a prolonged criminal history of fraud fraud that continued while she was in office with that whole public housing situation we are likely to find out that there are more things that she spent money on frivolously and and there may be other potential victims because if she's willing to forge documents for this 96 year old woman, I don't understand since there appears to be no legitimate connection between the two, how she found her except for maybe scouring nursing home records or something like that in order to get the information necessary, which means she might have done this to other people who have yet to come forward. Who knows how deep this goes? I will be following this story through the end, but I just want to point out and reemphasize to everybody out there in the audience that this is a person with a criminal history specifically in this realm she was not reformed when they elected her she's been in office for eight years who knows what other things she's done in eight years i know everybody wants to give second chances i believe in second chances but don't get burned over and over again voting for these people out of the kindness of your own heart because the fact of the matter is past behavior is still one of the best predictors of future behavior but hey those are just my thoughts let me know your thoughts down in the comments below if you like this video then show them by leaving a like subscribe for more content follow me on my social medias support me via the support links in the description of this video this has been me talking about the regina hill story till next time